At the end of this video, you'll know how to properly perform a RockShox Reba lower leg surface. I strongly recommend watching it in its entirety to fully understand each individual step involved. The repair in this video is done by a qualified bicycle surface technician. And if you have any doubt whether or not you can properly perform the repair shown here, you should not attempt it. If you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We also have a Facebook group for people who want to learn more about being able to surf and mountain bikes themselves. And you're welcome to join that group with the help of the link in the description below. Before we open up the fork, it's incredibly important to clean it. If you receive a fork for a lower leg surface, it's never going to be 100% clean, especially the steerer tube can hold a lot of dirt and sand. Spray the fork copiously with bike cleaner. We use Makov bike cleaner, but feel free to use any cleaner solution you prefer. And by using a pressurized spray bottle, it's easy to get the stuff into every nook and cranny. After you've used the bike cleaner and let it sit for a minute or two, rinse it off, any method will do, but a mobile outdoor cleaner will prove to be particularly helpful and efficient. Make sure to dry the fork properly before moving on to the next step. It's recommended that for the next steps, you use a bench mount work stand to be able to hold the fork while doing the RockShox Reba lower leg surface. The rebound adjuster consists of two parts. First, take out the rebound adjuster shaft. And after you've removed this shaft, you can take out the rebound adjuster with a long five millimeter hex key. The air spring is tightened with a foot bolt and using the same five millimeter hex key, you can remove this bolt as well. There can be quite some stiction between the bottom of the damper and air spring and the lower leg, so you'll need to knock these out with a hammer. We use specific damper and spring side removal tools to prevent the threads from damaging. With the removal tool in place, give it a solid tap with a mallet. This should be enough to break it loose. With the lower legs loosened, you can rotate the fork to a standing position and remove the damper and air spring. Be sure to have your oil drain pan ready because oil will be coming out of the fork legs. Because only the fork brace keeps the loose lower leg in place, it's a good practice to strengthen it using a through axle. We're going to replace the foam rings, seals and sag ring. And to do so, we need to remove the old ones first. Using a long tire lifter, we can pop the seals and foam rings right out. For now, we're going to leave the fork legs for a while and focus on the damper and air spring. Remove the air cap to get to the valve underneath. Make use of a valve remover tool to remove the valve. Remove the top cap using a 24 mm top cap socket. Don't use a standard socket. A standard socket does not engage the top cap enough and may twist loose when pressure is applied damaging it in the process. Rotate the fork so the stanchions point upwards. The air spring is kept in a place with an internal retaining ring. Using retaining ring pliers, you can remove this ring. Using the lower leg removal tool for some extra leverage, we can now simply pull the air spring out. Normally, the air spring top cap is attached to one or more tokens. In this case, the tokens have loosened and simply fell out of the bottom of the stanchion. Rotate the fork in an upwards position again and using a two millimeter hex tool, remove the bolt that keeps the compression adjuster knob in place. Using the same 24 millimeters top cap socket, remove the top cap and compression damper. Throw out the damper oil and the damper is also kept into place with an eternal retaining ring. Using retaining ring pliers, you can remove this ring as well. With the fork totally disassembled, now comes the fun part of cleaning every individual item using tap water. If you use a sink, make sure smaller parts do not get washed down the drain. Using a shop towel on a long plastic PVC tube, you can easily clean the stanchions without damaging them. The towel is fixed to the tube so you can move it back and forth without it becoming detached. Through time and use, the O-rings become hard and flat, which causes them to loosen their sealing ability. 
because of that we replace each individual o-ring you can obviously buy a surface kit for your fork which will include the o-rings necessary if you don't have such a surface kit and because specifications can be hard to track down for each individual fork you can always simply measure the cross section and length of the o-ring using a caliper reassemble the damper shaft with the new o-rings and use super slick light suspension grease on the damper shaft seal head before installing it into the stanchion insert the damper shaft into the stanchion and fix it in a place using the retaining ring the retaining ring has a sharp edge and a round edge make sure the sharp edge points outwards and the round edge inwards to prevent the damper from getting loose reassemble the air spring shaft making sure every part sits in the correct place use super slick light suspension grease on the damper shaft seal head and part which connects to the inner wall of the stanchion then insert the air spring shaft into the stanchion the air spring shaft is also kept into place using an internal retaining ring place the sag o-ring onto one of the stanchions and rotate the fork into an upright position since the tokens had gone loose from the air spring top cap we need to attach them again before installing the air cap put some light suspension grease on the seal to prevent air loss in case it gets nicked then put some loctite on the threads before reinstalling and reinstall the air cap using the 24 millimeter top cap socket insert the valve again before we put fresh suspension fluid into the damper use the rebound adjuster to open up the damper and turn the rebound adjuster clockwise from the perspective of the rider to do so place suspension oil into the damper stanchion we use silkaline rsf5 suspension fluid pump the damper shaft a number of times so the air moves out set the oil level gauge at the length of the compression damper minus about half an inch this way when extracting the excess suspension fluid you'll know for sure the entire compression damper will be submerged and place the new o-rings on the compression damper lubricate the o-rings with suspension grease and insert the compression damper and tighten it using the 24 millimeters top cap socket reinstall the compression adjuster knob pre-soak the foam rings which we're going to install later and use a plastic container with Olin's Renap CGLP 68 lower leg oil with the legs cleaned place the new foam rings into the lower legs using a pick to get them out of the plastic container since the foam rings were lubricated when moved into place we don't need any extra lubrication for the seals and since the foam rings have left enough on the insides of the lower leg using a 35 millimeter seal driver tool we can then proceed to hammer the seals in place it's now time to very carefully insert the damper and air spring into the lower legs but be careful not to damage the smooth walls of the lower legs during this process and also make sure that the damper and air spring go in correctly with the air spring sitting on the left and the damper on the right next up is the oil insertion into the lower legs and to be able to do this it's best to rotate the fork so the legs are pointing upwards for gravity to do its job when you put in the oil and be sure to move damper and air spring out a little again so they don't stick out of the lower legs and the oil actually has some room to go into put 10 millimeters Olin's Renap CGLP 68 lower leg oil into both legs using a syringe after you've pushed both rods out of the bottom of the lower legs it's time to reinstall the foot bolt and rebound adjuster don't forget to put new crush washers on both of them before you tighten them we use a torque wrench set at 7.4 newton meters to tighten both bolts inflate the air spring up to 90 psi this is the starting air pressure which can be modified based on personal preferences and riding style install the air cap afterwards 
If you have a front suspension test station, use it before either you or your client reinstalls the fork. Better be safe than sorry. A final cleanup with a bit of Maka Bike Protect and your RockShox Reba lower leg surface is done. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and don't forget to consider joining the Facebook group. And I hope I can welcome you again for the next video as well. Bye for now.